are monsoons really? Are they different types? Where do monsoons occur? Why do they occur? And what happens because they occur? All of the answers to these questions are coming up in this video. Be sure to stick around to the end to listen to Sharky's bite-sized lesson. When you think of monsoons, you might think of something like this. Heavy rainfall, floods, somewhere in India. And while that is all true, there is actually a lot more to it. A monsoon is a wind. And there you have it. Thank you for watching. No. A monsoon is a wind, but what makes this wind so special? Depending on the season, this wind is either going to move from the ocean to the land, or from the land to the ocean. And this change is going to result in differences in precipitation. So ultimately, a monsoon is a wind that changes direction in different seasons and results in changes in precipitation. So where does this all happen? Monsoons usually happen over the tropical region in that equatorial belt. Monsoons happen wherever there is a large piece of land sticking out into the ocean. So this happens over India, the bulge of Africa, Australia, southwestern United States, and northwestern Mexico. Now for the rest of this video, I'm going to be focusing on South Asia or India, just for the sake of simplicity. We get two main types of monsoons. We get our winter monsoon, also known as a dry or northeast monsoon, and our summer monsoon, also known as our southwest or wet monsoon. I'm sure you can already guess what the impact of these two monsoons is going to be. So where does the northeast and southwest come in? In geography, when we are labeling winds, remember a monsoon is a wind, we name it based on where it is coming from. A northeast monsoon means that this wind is coming from the northeast. A southwest monsoon means that this wind is coming from the southwest. And as we look at how these monsoons work, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Now, unless you have been living under a rock, you'll know that the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere have different seasons at different times of the year. If it is winter in the southern hemisphere, it is summer in the northern hemisphere and vice versa. Since we are looking at India, which is in the Northern Hemisphere, the summer monsoon will happen in the Northern Hemisphere's summer months. Summer monsoons occur anywhere between June and September. The same thing goes for the winter monsoon. The winter monsoon will occur anywhere between September and March. Before we can really look at how a summer monsoon and a winter monsoon work, there are four things that we need to understand to help us set this foundation. The first thing that we need to know is that the land and the ocean heat up differently. The land is a solid, the ocean is a liquid. Liquids heat up slowly and cool down slowly. Solids heat up quickly and cool down quickly. Let's think about this for a moment. On a very sunny, warm day, you leave two things out in your backyard. A rock and a bucket of water. At midday, if you go and touch that rock, it will feel very hot. That rock is a solid and has absorbed a lot of heat very quickly. If you stick your hand in that bucket of water, it will feel warm, pleasant. Not too hot, not too cold. If you return to that rock and that bucket of water at midnight, you will feel that that rock is very cold. It has lost all of that heat very quickly. If you stick your hand in the bucket of water, it will feel around about the same temperature that it did at midday. And that is because liquids retain heat longer. Now the same thing happens on a large scale over our land mass and our ocean. Our land heats up quickly and cools down quickly, whereas our ocean warms up slowly and cools down slowly. In other words, the land gets hotter quicker, but the ocean retains heat longer. The second thing
thing that we need to know is difference between a high pressure and a low pressure cell. A high pressure cell is associated with cold air. Cold air is more dense and it sinks. A low pressure cell is associated with warm air. Warm air is less dense and it rises. The third thing that you need to keep in mind, which is actually our golden rule for this lesson, is that air always moves from a high pressure to a low pressure. Let me explain. Let's pretend on this side we have a low pressure cell and on this side we have a high pressure cell. We just learned that a high pressure cell is associated with cold air that is sinking. So you need to picture this cold air sinking towards the ground. Now, this air can't go past the ground. As soon as it hits the ground, it's going to diverge and move along the Earth's surface. All right, so this is what we have happening over here. Now, let's have a look at our low pressure cell for a moment. Our low pressure cell is associated with rising air. So this warm air is going to be rising up. Okay, so we have over here our high pressure sinking air, our low pressure rising air. As soon as this air rises up, something needs to come and replace it. We can't have a vacuum. A vacuum is a space where no matter exists and that doesn't happen on earth. As this air moves up, this cold air that is now sinking and moving along our earth's surface is going to move towards this empty space and that is why air always moves from a high pressure to a low pressure. So we have this air that is sinking and rising. This air is coming in to replace it. And you can see that we have air moving from a high pressure to a low pressure. The fourth thing that you need to know before we can get into monsoons is that air is affected by whatever is below it. You can even do this experiment at home. Fill up your basin with boiling water. Please do not put your hand in the boiling water. Disclaimer. If you hover your hand above that boiling water, you will feel that the air is warm. So the water is very hot and it has affected the air above it, making the air warm. Now get rid of that hot water. If you fill your basin up with a whole bunch of ice cubes and you hover your hand above those ice cubes, it will feel cold. The cold ice cubes have affected the air above it and so the air now feels cold. So we can apply the same principle to monsoons. If our land is hot, the air above that land is hot. If our ocean is cold, the air above the ocean is cold. Alright, so those are the four things that you need to know before we can jump into monsoons. Now we can look at the difference between a winter monsoon and a summer monsoon. Let's start off with our winter monsoon. In winter, the landmass doesn't get as hot, so there is cooler air over the land. Remember that cold air is associated with a high pressure cell. In comparison to the land, the ocean is much warmer. This means that we have warmer air over the ocean, which is associated with a low pressure cell. Don't forget our golden rule. Air always moves from a high pressure to a low pressure. This means that during a winter monsoon, air moves from the land to the ocean. Have a look where this wind is coming from. Our air is coming from the northeast. This makes sense why our winter monsoon is also known as the Northeast Monsoon. The air that is coming from the land is very cold and dry. Cold, dry air is not associated with cloud formation and it is not associated with rain. This means that winter monsoons result in low rainfall, dry conditions and drought. This is why our winter monsoon is also known as our dry monsoon. Let's compare this to the summer monsoon. In summer, the land gets a lot warmer. Warm air is associated with a low pressure cell and so there is a low pressure over the land. In comparison, the ocean is much cooler. Colder air is associated with a high pressure cell. Remember our rule? 
air always moves from a high pressure to a low pressure. That means that during a summer monsoon, air is moving from the ocean to the land. Have a look where this wind is coming from. It is coming from the southwest. This is why the summer monsoon is also known as the southwest monsoon. When air comes from the ocean, it contains a lot of moisture. This air rises, cools and condenses, forming clouds and rain. Summer monsoons are associated with heavy rainfall and floods, which is why our summer monsoon is also known as the wet monsoon. So how do these monsoons actually affect people and the environment? Well, our winter monsoon, being associated with little rainfall and drought, means that there is going to be a lack of water. This means that crops don't get enough water, leading to food shortages and ultimately causing food insecurity. On the other hand, the summer monsoon is associated with a lot of rain. Now, this is good in terms of filling up dams, providing water for crops, but too much rain leads to floods and too much rain can actually drown crops, again leading to food insecurity. Floods can also cause soil erosion, landslides, destruction of property and homes, and a loss of lives. Okay, now it is time for Sharky's bite-sized lesson. Okay, Sharky, let's see how well you listened. Right, okay, you ready? Quick, 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 let's do this. A monsoon is a wind that changes direction in different seasons and causes changes in precipitation. They occur in tropical regions. And today we focus specifically on India. We get two main types of monsoons, the winter monsoon and the summer monsoon. There were four things that we had to remember. The land and ocean heat up differently, the difference between a high pressure cell and a low pressure cell, our golden rule which said that air always moves from a high pressure to a low pressure, and that air is affected by whatever is below it. During the winter monsoon, air moves from the land to the ocean, and during a summer monsoon, air moves from the ocean to the land. The winter monsoon is associated with no rainfall and droughts, whereas the summer monsoon is associated with lots of rainfall and floods. Yeah, we did it! Woo! Okay, and that is it for this video. Be sure to go back and rewatch anything that you need to recap. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe. Let me know in the comments if there's a particular topic that you want me to cover. See you next time. Bye!